In this video, we'll be looking at the second section in John chapter 7. The sermon I preached from this section I called Seek the Lord. Chapter 7 falls into a bigger section in John, which starts at chapter 5 all the way through to chapter 10. In chapter 5, after the healing of the paralytic, we saw the authorities out to kill Jesus. And that theme starts running through strongly from chapter 5 through to chapter 10. This particular section in chapter 7 starts at the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. In the previous section, we saw people needing to make a judgment call about who Jesus is. And we saw many people making the wrong judgment call. And this passage picks up on that Jesus teaching in the temple courts. And there's still much confusion about who Jesus is. As always, I urge you to take some time to read this passage a few times. Look for some key repetition. Uh, there's some important repetition in this. Look for the key characters. Uh, try and get an idea of, of what's happening in the flow of this text. Spend some time praying. Ask God to open your eyes to understand his truth uh, so that it would indeed impact you. And then, as always, I'm just going to highlight some of what I've seen in the text. I do these videos using the NIV, New International Version, text of the Bible. In this particular passage, uh, they translate uh, a, a key word um, in, a, in a way that's different to the original. Uh, the word is repeated in this passage a few times. So it's, uh, it's we're trying here. They tried to seize him. Uh, they were, Jesus says, you will look for me. And you will look for me. Now, all of this is an important, a key word in John's gospel. And it's the Greek word, zeteo. Zeteo, which means to seek. They are seeking to kill Jesus. They were seeking to seize him. And Jesus says, you will seek me. You will seek for me but you will not find me. Uh, now, early on in chapter 1, as the first disciples came to Jesus, Jesus said to them, what are you seeking? And they were seeking him, and they found in him the one, uh, the word made flesh, in whom is life. And this idea of seeking Jesus rightly uh, becomes a key theme in John's gospel. Uh, but here in this passage, we show most of the people here are seeking Jesus wrongly. Now the whole idea of seeking the Lord is uh, bigger than just a John idea. It's a big Bible idea. And we see this in Isaiah 55 verse 6 where the prophet says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. And we hear again in Jeremiah 29 verse 13 where God had promised to his exiled exiled people, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And then in Psalm 27, we also see the psalmist longing to seek the Lord in his temple. So the idea of seeking the Lord rightly is a big idea in the Bible. And here we have a whole lot of religious people. They're in the temple courts. They're in Jerusalem. And they are people who are seeking the Lord but they're actually doing it in all the wrong ways. Because if they had sought the Lord rightly, they would have seen that the Lord Jesus is the Lord who they were seeking. So just to look at some characters in this story, uh, we've got the people of Jerusalem. We've got Jesus himself, who they say, this man, isn't this the man? So Jesus is very much the central character in this section. And as we, we see the people of Jerusalem have one thought about him. They uh, speak about those in authority. And they're questioning uh, what the authorities who are the Pharisees, uh, the chief priests and the Pharisees. So it's the, the leaders in Jerusalem.
And then we've also got the crowd. And just a reminder, this is in Jerusalem, in the temple courts. These are all people who were trying to seek the Lord, but only a few of them actually sought the Lord rightly. Only here in verse 31 do we see the right response to Jesus. And we're given two of the key words that we see that we're looking out for in John's gospel. We see that they believed in him because they said, when the Messiah comes, will he perform more signs than this man? So these key words, there's evidence, evidence which calls people to believe, and belief in Jesus leads to life through him. Now, this whole section is giving us evidence about Jesus, and it's showing us mostly people who don't believe in him, who don't receive life through his name. They may have been seeking the Lord, but they didn't realize that Jesus actually was the Lord they were seeking. They didn't believe in him. They didn't receive life through him. But we do see that many in the crowd did believe in him. And they said, when the Messiah comes, will he perform more signs than this man? And this idea of when the Messiah comes uh, is also repeated. And then Jesus says, actually, you won't be able to come to where I am. Another key idea is uh, coming to know who Jesus is, uh, this word concluded here, um, have the authorities really come to know? It's from the same word that we'll see repeated here, come to know. You will know me. You, they claimed to know him, um, but actually Jesus saying, you, you don't know who I am. There's also this idea of seeking and finding. So in this first section, just playing on this word knowing and not knowing, we see a whole lot of people who know things about Jesus, but they even they haven't realized some key things about him. They say when the Messiah comes, no one will know where he's from. Uh, they should have known their Bibles better than that. These are the religious elite. If you go and read Micah chapter 5, verse 2, they were told that out of Bethlehem would come the Messiah or the Christ. So there's some misinformation being spread about Jesus or about the coming Messiah. And so although they know him, they don't really know him. And Jesus said to them, well, you don't really know me because you don't know my father who sent me. And this is something that he had already picked up in chapter five, where he said, if they had known the father, they would have known him. And then the play on this idea of seeking and finding, you will seek me, but you won't find me. Uh, you will seek me but not find me, is something that's happening in the second half of this section. So although uh, Jeremiah had prophesied and said, you will seek me and find me, Jesus is saying, you will seek me but not find me. So it's the exact opposite of this Jeremiah 29, 13. And these are actually absolutely terrifying words that Jesus highlights here. And one of the big things that these people hadn't realized is they didn't know he who sent me. Uh, so God the Father, who Jesus had pointed to, God the King in heaven, uh, these seekers actually didn't know him. And he was the one who Jesus says had sent him, who he was going back to. And so the terrifying things we see in these verses is that Jesus is saying, you've only got a little bit more time with me here. And then he's going back to the Father. And if they don't believe in him, if they don't find life in his name, once he's gone, they will seek for him. They'll keep seeking the Lord. But because they didn't realize that Jesus is the Lord, they will not find him. And the devastating consequences of that are, and where I am, you cannot come. Now that is a, a terrifying statement that Jesus makes there and that they repeat at the end of this. What does Jesus mean when he says, where I am, you cannot come? J.C. Ryle says of this, these verses, and may none of us ever hear the words from Jesus, where I am, you cannot come. But now an interesting thing that we see in John's gospel is uh, we see these very same type of words um, that Jesus says, I am only with you for a short time longer, and then I'm going. And then we see this whole 
interaction between Jesus and his disciples um, in John 13 and 14. And then in 14 verse 6, uh, we're given the clear answer. So in John 13 and 14, Jesus says this and he says, you can't come now, but you will come later. And then Thomas asks, but we don't know the way. And Jesus says, well, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if you truly want to seek the Lord and be with him forever, then you need to see that this Jesus is the one who came from God the Father and he is the only way to God the Father. And in verse 31 here, we see just this glimmer of hope amongst many seekers who are left in the dark. We see that some in the crowd, many in the crowd, believed in him. They looked at the evidence, the signs. They said, could the Messiah perform more signs than this? So they realized this man must be the Messiah. They believed in him. And what John tells us in John 20 verse 30 and 31 is that by believing in him, you may have life in his name. Some people in this passage found life in Jesus because they sought the Lord while he may be found. They called on him while he is near. And Jeremiah said in verse 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And the problem was these people weren't seeking the Lord with all their hearts. Their religiosity had blinded them to the truth of who Jesus was. These people began to believe in Jesus and seek him with all their hearts. And the call of this passage is for us as believers to keep seeking, to look at the evidence about Jesus and to grow in knowing him more and more and more, that our belief would be rooted increasingly in him. We would be rejoicing in the life that he came to win for us. But we should also be so aware of those who are around us still seeking but haven't found Jesus. We don't want anyone to get to the point where they hear these words from Jesus, where I am, you cannot come. And we want them to be ready. So we want to point people to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to get to the Father and rejoice and celebrate in this life with him forever. Well, God bless as you continue to dig into this passage. And I pray that it would grow your love for Jesus, who reveals himself to us in this glorious gospel.